Hi there. Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to be talking about syntax trees. Sometimes I'm sure they're called, you know, syntactic tree structures. Um, And this type of linguistic analysis is another way of um, explaining syntax. Now, if you've watched my other videos, you know that I, um, I'm a fan of doing it this way. I use this type of analysis, which is slightly easier. Um, I find that it is especially, especially practical in a classroom where you you just want to quickly slap something up on the, the blackboard to, to explain some semantic difference or whatever. This type of analysis works just fine. However, I know that some of you might be in universities where you, uh, you use a more thorough syntactic analysis than this. And I'm sure your textbooks are full of these types of um, like analyses. And this is a syntactic tree, a tree structure. And that's, this is the, the, the type of analysis that I'm going to walk you through today. Um, central to this type of analysis is the idea that we, we always start by categorizing words into parts of speech or word classes. Um, therefore, it is important that you know what each word class is so that you can actually begin your analysis by, by writing the word class of each word. Because this is important in order to form what's called phrases. Phrases are the, you know, it's the bread and butter of this type of analysis, to be honest. If you don't form phrases, you don't form a tree. Now, a phrase is... Um, uh, It's a string of words categorized into into word classes like this. Um, and then you structure the phrase into the, uh, what's the head of the phrase and then branching down. I should maybe just for uh, the sake of hygiene categorize a as an article and then afterwards as a determiner. Um, here we would branch down and say that with red pause forms a prepositional phrase and then we would say that um, red pause would have the noun as the head. So this would form a noun phrase, which would latch on to the prepositional phrase. So this is a noun phrase. Within the noun phrase, you can find a prepositional phrase. Within the prepositional phrase, you can find another noun phrase consisting of an adjective and a noun. These are phrases. Uh, let's try to, to analyze some complete sentence instead of just a phrase. So if I say, we are beneath a roof. We is a pronoun, are is a verb, beneath is a preposition, a is an article, Roof is a noun. Article branches up into determiner. 
um, pronoun branches up, I guess, or um, goes under the umbrella word class of noun, and this forms a noun phrase. The rest of this will just go up and into a verb phrase because a predicate or in other words the rest of this sentence is seen as be having the verb as its head it's the verb plus whatever other sort of bonus information you have about the verb if it's an object it tells us what the verb is being done to if it's an adverbial phrase or it's an adverbial function it tells us how when or where um, so the, the predicate of a sentence is a verb phrase, usually, uh, involving uh, the rest of the, the words underneath it. Here, in this case, there's a prepositional um, phrase beneath the verb phrase. And we would also branch together the determiner and the noun here into a noun phrase. And the hierarchical structure would look like this and they merge together to form a sentence it's, it's quite easy um, maybe the hardest part of this is knowing what each um, well you need to be 100 percent comfortable with categorizing words into word classes. So if I ask you now, for example, if I ask you to give a word class to each of these, what would you call this? Well, this it's a determiner. Here we have a noun, we have a verb, we have an article, which is a determiner, and we have a noun. Uh, these would form a noun phrase, uh, which would join together with this verb phrase, and these would also form a noun phrase, which is, you know, on the same hierarchical height as the predicate, and together these would form a sentence. So just being able to do this, like to know with certainty which word class each is a part of, for example, that's one of the hardest uh, prerequisites of using this type of analysis. Let's do some other sentences. Um, okay. The girl with large hands. <sighs> destroyed the house. This is an article. This is a noun. Oops. This is a preposition. Uh, this is an adjective. This is a noun. This is a verb. This is an article again. This is a noun. And from here, you just need to correctly piece them together as subject and predicate. Now, in this sentence, we can see that the verb is far to the right, which means we are going to get a large subject in this sentence. Um, so let's just begin. This is a determiner which moves. You should probably uh, look ahead here and uh, build our house of cards a bit higher up, up 
to here, maybe. Noun phrase. Under this, we get a prepositional phrase. Um, or, no. This latches onto here. Um, under that, you get, and this is important, when you have an adjective plus a noun, they form a noun phrase. Because the head of large hands, like here, the head of that phrase is the hands. You can remove large and still retain some meaning by just using hands. But you cannot remove hands and still retain meaning with just large. So that's sort of the, the proof that hands is the head of the phrase which turns the entire phrase into a noun phrase. And then the rest of this is a verb phrase consisting of a noun phrase which has a determiner like this. And together they form S for sentence. Okay? I mean, that's. I think that's all I'm gonna say about this. I'll probably make a couple of more videos syntactically analyzing larger sentences, maybe complex sentences with conjunctions and stuff between. Um, but as an introduction, I think this is enough. So hopefully some of this made sense. If it didn't, what are you gonna do? Try again tomorrow maybe, okay? Bye-bye.